What's up, everybody? My name is Kason. Welcome back to the WDL. This is the Season 3, Week 5 Leonis video. And man, oh man, do we have some good matches for you guys today. I've already watched them. They have some bangers in them. That is all I will say. But let's take a look at the standings before we get into these fights four weeks in, right before we hit that halfway point in the season. So first place, we've got Jay Black all alone with Chronic Fatigue with 10 points. Not far behind, though, three teams. Sand Rooster of Unicorn Gunfight, King Delita of Ark Knights, and Zalk of Boko Buddies all with nine points. Very, very interesting to see how this breaks down is we've got three more teams with seven points. Highwind, Coach of Tears for Spears, Machin X, Coach of Shoe Metal Alchemist, and Willy Goats, Coach, Coach of the Corpse Brigade. Johnny B of Disposable Heroes with five, All Smoked Up of Trap Queens with four, and last but not least, Tile of Fire Force with two. We've got some absolute bangers to get, to get into, you guys. Five best of threes. Without further ado, let's jump into them. Game one of this Leonis Division series, we've got Machin X of Shoe Metal Alchemist on the left side of the beach versus Highwind of Tears for Spears. Dragonskin coming out from the Victoria as a full UR rainbow composition for Tears for Spears. A couple of glove units here along with the Zazan as Oblivion's Aura coming out from Kefka to get some attack resistances up. Pugilistic Mastery from Raldor giving himself some unit attack resist, even some defense piercing, and he's good to go. Oblivi Oblivion's Presence though comes out from the Zoma, and it looks like they're going to be able to drop Bravery on the other side. Taunting Blade gonna get some hate up for Moraga, but the counter from Zoma, I think gets rid of that hate he just accrued. So actually, that really doesn't do a whole lot for him. March of the Juggernaut comes out from Zazan, though, getting that Man Eater up on the party. And what does Victoria have? Frost Reaver tanked up pretty well, but does land the Frostbite onto Zoma. How much starting AP does he get? Not sure. Dragon's Fang popping off for Victoria only does 125 damage. That is absolutely nuts. I can't believe how little that did. Her barrier does get broken by the Kefka, to go, though, with the standard attack. Looks like Zoma starts out with plenty of AP. So this Frostbite shouldn't be a big deal as long as it's not a long extended fight. Kakrak comes down, drops the bravery, but Victoria this time gets the counter, heals herself back, which also procs Zoma's counter, which heals, heals him back. Everybody's just healing up for funsies here as Zazan's going to go next. What does he have in store for us? 35 AP. He's going to go Killer Cross. Drop that human resist. And here comes Dragon's Fang again. What in the world? I think this is three times in a row that she just did this. Frost Reaver on the entire party going to land a Frost Bite onto Zelma. Everybody calm down here. Kafka should be able to land a kill onto Victoria here. All right, so Zoma is going to go next. Actually, Kefka's got a b bunch of casting time. So what happens in the meantime here? Looks like the limit break from Zoma, Glacial Doom. This is a nice attack, believe it or not. Part of it does look like ice, part of it looks like fire, part of it looks like dark, but that is a KO onto Victoria as Kefka's still channeling his spell. Raldor, can he do something here? He kind of pops off with the Wicked Pummel, killing Zoma, almost killing Zazan, but Light of Judgment's gonna hit as Raldor walks into the AoE. Unfortunate for him. Kefka's going to lap, just go again, standard attack, and claim the kill. And that is a game one victory for the Shumetal Alchemists. Game two here, and what are the switch ups? Looks like Highwind, Coach of Tears for Spears, goes with Joom, Raldor, and Slime. So, looking to try and get some more sustain on the team, as it looks like the Shoe Metal Alchemists are bringing the exact same thing as last time. Major next with the Kefka, Zoma, and Zazan. I think this is even the same initial turn rotation. So, nothing switched, it looks like, coming out from Machin X. And here's that Oblivion's presence getting that bravery down on the party on hit. Pugilistic Mastery from Raldor, so he's going to walk kind of in the back line here, so he shouldn't be caught by any sort of AoE, as Life Circulator, Urel's TMR, comes out from Slime. Very interesting tech. Zazan's going to go next. What is he going to go for? He's going to go for Elias TMR, actually, the uh, Dragon's Bloodline, nullifying any sort of um, the Berserk. I a couple other status effects as well. Show Me Your Power comes out from Kefka, giving that hate to Zoma and giving him some AoE resist, so he should tank this up very nicely. He does just that. Stormwind Ren does very little to the entire party, actually, as Zoma's gonna go next. Psy Cannon, what does it do? 7,000 is quite a bit onto the Joom, especially because he heals off of that as the Zombie TMR is here for Raldor. But man, oh man, Slime has the heals. Here he comes. Hustle Dance plus one heals for 11,000, so Joom is nice and healthy at this moment. 46 AP on Zazan. What does he have in store for us? He's going to go for Murderous Blade, 2,800 damage. Heals himself up a little bit as well, so it looks like he's probably running the Blood Sword as Zoma, with that hate, is going to take up that Air Incisor from Joom. And here he comes with the Limit Break response. Glacial Doom, last time this did a very sizable chunk of damage. 
in fight number one. How much does it do this time? 7,200 again, dropping the bravery. And my question is, can Kefka land a kill before Slime is able to heal? That's the question. Yes, he can. He actually just standard attacks and just 4,600. Man, oh man, Kefka is absolutely nuts. Demolition Fist, though, drops Zoma like nothing. 12k damage. And Shadow Flare, the offensive slime coming out, might have Zing turned off, actually. Drops the AoE resist on the party as Kefka does have a ton of it, so that might help out here. But Kefka's going to channel an AoE. This is going to be hard to overcome. Slime does have that courage when he's at full health, and Raldor does have re-raise online. Jamming edge, 2600 damage, not a ton on the Raldor. Here comes that Light of Judgment Plus, though. It would land a double kill, but courage and re-raise keep them alive. Is there anything they can do about this? Slime might be able to heal them both up to full. Raldor needs to do a ton. That is a ton. It is not enough to land a kill there, but it is a ton of damage. But this is actually a channel. So I take it back, he does have Zing online, and he prioritizes re-raising instead of healing to full. I don't think that is what you want, Slime, because here comes Forsaken from Kefka. That is a triple kill, and that is a 2-0 series victory for the Shoe Metal Alchemists. Game one of the red team versus the red team. It's Ark Knights versus Fire Force, King Delita and Tayo. And here we go. We've seen, we're seeing some fire units also coming out from the Fire Force as it looks like Ildir's Theorem immediately going to pop off for King Delita. Is this the Cheese Blade strategy we've seen him run before? Ildir's theme into the Keen Blade. Just so much CT up for the party as Greater Chi Barrier comes out from the Garvel. So Ildira, Garvel, and Dario is the team comp. And no, it is not Keen Blade. Just using the Ildira Limit Break for that. Heart of Flutter, the Sweetheart Ildira team are going to get Dario up in front. Set the pace comes out from Setia, and it looks like it's Rain, Setia, and Eltra here for Tayo's Fire Force. Shining Nova comes out from Rain, going to drop that fire resistance, going to boost up how much damage Setia does next time. We saw this to great effect as Tayo beat a water team last week with this fire resistance break. It looks like Sorceress's Liberation coming out from Ildira, so expecting an offensive set coming out from her. Garvel gonna go next. Magic Reflex, though, from Rain dodges out a ton of damage from Garvel. He will take absolutely none. Oh my god, he gets another Magic Reflex. Chicken Blade misses. Uh, so no bravery down. Uh, two in a row. Hits dodged. Rain is out here like Neo from the Matrix right now. Can he keep it up? Flame Binding Bow Shot. Only 3,500 damage, though. And what does Rain have in store for us? Soul Prominence, a nice little fire chain going. It looks like it's up to a three chain. He dodges another one. Oh my god, this is three in a row, you guys. Jamming threats. I, I don't know what is going on. Tyle's got some major hacks going on. Here comes Eltra channeling another spell. Height 2 Kirigo comes out from Ildira, though. But do they have enough damage to get through this Dario? I'm not sure they do. Because he is a very tanky boy, and Eldira has heals. Thermal exposure hits on multiple units. How much damage did that do to Garvel? Actually, not that much. Actually did more to Dario than it did Garvel. You gotta be kidding me. Magic Reflex, dear lord, Chicken Blade. That's four in a row that Rain has dodged. What in the world? He has his dancing shoes on at the moment. Oh god, everybody calm down. Okay, finally Rain gets hit. It is confirmed that... Uh, stop it. Stop it. You guys, magic... Oh my god. Five out of six magic reflexes. This has to be some sort of record. Armor incinerating bow shot comes out from Sedia. I'm absolutely losing my mind right now. Eltra is going to go next. What is she going to channel here? Dario is going to go chicken blade. And the bravery does not drop, so I think he has some debuff resistance built up in his kit. Kiriko comes out. Full heals the party. Rain doesn't have the AP or doesn't have the damage to land a kill. You've... Six... Oh my god! Somebody better check on me. I am going to die while casting this. This is seven reflexes for Tayo. This is unbelievable. And six out of seven for rain. Barrier break arrow goes for 6,000 damage. Chicken blade lands on to the rain from Dario. What the hell is going on? Frost Vivification, AP goes right down, getting some AP on the party. Flaming Impact comes out from rain, lands the slow, and lands the kill onto Garvel. Height 2 Kiriga comes out from Mildira, and man, oh man, unfortunate for King Delita, there's no full life on the other side as the stun lands from Sedia. Uh, the standard attack coming out from Rain, just going to do a little bit of chip. I think eventually Odira's going to run out of AP. She can't do enough damage to find the kill. Does Elshra go for a heal here? She did earlier in the fight. Yes, she will. She's going to go for a Kiriga on the entire team. And this is in a war of, war of the attrition, guys. 
this could legitimately come down to turns if they are unable to kill each other, and it might just be a 3v2 win. Flight of the Firebird comes out. This is going to drop fire resistance, though, on the party. That's a good chunk of damage coming out from the Sedia. Rain, can you follow up on this at all? Yes, he can. Soul Prominence is almost enough to land a kill. The stunned Dario, though, can do absolutely no nothing. And I get it, Dario, because I am absolutely stunned as to what the hell is going on in this fight. So I feel you, dog. And here comes Elshra. She is going to channel a spell. This might be offensive now that there are no heals to be done. Armor incinerating bow shot. And nope, it's a quicken. So here comes Sedio. Does she have no enough AP? No, she doesn't. It's six. So this is probably still not going to be a kill. I take that back. It is Zantatsukin. There is a chance. Oh my goodness. Odin. Put me out of my misery right now <laughs> to end this game. 2,400 damage onto the Dario. Rain is going to go next. Can he slash chain? Yes, he can, but it's less than 500 damage. There are four actions left, you guys. Height based cure onto the Dario. I imagine Elshro is just going to go for another quicken. She is going to channel it. Draining seal coming up from Dario, but it's going to be too little too late. Sedia takes the last turn, the standard attack, and for the second time this season, this fight ends with two people versus three people on turns and i know i don't know what's going on but it's always king delita i think it was one of his fights i think earlier in the season that was a 2v3 I, this i i can't let's go to the next game <laughs> Heading into game two after Tayo had a very clean uh, game one victory with absolutely no luck involved whatsoever. And here comes King Delita with the response. It is Ildira, Orlando, and Dario. So the switch up is uh, subbing in Orlando instead of the Garvel. So that is the major switch. And it looks like Tayo is actually bringing Terra instead of Sedia and also bringing Yuna. So a full UR squad coming out from Tayo's Fire Force. Heart of Flutter still coming out from the Dario. So that unit. Uh, resist up as well as the movement buffs and the exact same thing coming up from the tank on the other side So rain says I'll copy exactly what you do and it's probably a good decision veil of midnight hate down along with some AP That is a new TMR to the game I can't remember exactly whose it is But that is new to our game I believe as sorceress's liberation comes out from Yildira She's just going to sit back in the back line though and she will not move forward that is what her ai tends to do crest of the black lion comes out from orlando so this is an aoe resist some uh ap restore as well and draining seal coming out from dario just going to heal himself up honestly he was full health already so he really didn't need it but here comes ildira she is slowly going to enter the fight and shining nova coming out from rain going to drop that fire resistance onto dario just like game number one I thought we were going to crash for a second, but we didn't crash. We're all good. Terra should be able to follow this up with another fire attack herself, and it's the double limit break back to back. Crescent Ryan played. How much damage is this going to do? 9,600. Wow. Terra eating her Wheaties this morning. Very well done. And here comes Yuna. I think this is an offensive spell. Does she live this hit from Orlando, though? She does. Crucially, the entire team does. But Terra just got berserked. Um, I completely failed to call this out earlier. I think Orlando must have used Vega TMR, and I didn't see that because this is now a berserked Terra. As Eroga Life Friend kills the Yuna, this is a berserked Terra. She is going to be nearly useless at this point. As Ildira is going to walk forward, get the height to Kuriga onto Dario. And man, oh man, this uh, fight just got really interesting really quickly. Soul Prominence coming up from the rain as Silent Mode is going on and off uh, very consistently through this fight. Terra's just going to walk forward and just poke him with a stick for 100 in damage. That's really not going to do a whole lot, though, as Orlando's going to say Sword Play Thunder God, bringing the hammer down. Should be able to haste himself, summoning about 8,000 swords. Very cool animation. 7700 damage and lands the berserk on the rain too so it says hey all of that uh good luck you got in game one not happening i'm getting it this game i have to wonder if this is a 97 faith or land the way these berserks are landing makes me think that it is the case but man oh man this series is nothing short of incredible already and i cannot wait for this third game rain does have the zombie tmr so he will respawn and get a turn to act but he does not have a big enough spirit bomb to take all three of these units out. As Oldira should be able to seal this right here. Nope. I take it back, guys. He might just get seven out of nine magic reflexes like he did into game one. Oh my god, I was kidding. Rain, I was kidding. I was I was joking. Oh my god. Crush Armor Plus comes out of Orlando out from Orlando. And guys, I have to say, I think the switch from King Delita putting in Orlando might have literally just been for the simple fact that he can't be magic reflexed. Regardless, we are heading into a game three of this series. This is insanity.
All right, guys, I took about an eight hour nap and then woke back up to cast this last game just to verify that I wasn't dreaming in earlier this series. As it looks like the Garble is coming back with a Little Leela the Bold and Murmur composition from King Delita. Jealous Wrath coming out again from Little Leela, though. So this Vega TMR, man, oh man, we could see more Berserk stuff. As it looks like a Warrior of Light, Setia, and Seymour composition coming out. Is this a limit break from Setia? No, it's not. It's Fire Blessing. She was just taking her sweet time to think. As Seymour, what is he going to go for? Take your time, Seymour. Shadowcast comes out. It is an evasion setup, it looks like. And uh, Warrior of Light going to step forward. This, I believe, is a limit break. Maybe? Bueller? Oh, God. Crystal Braver comes out. And uh, this series is really testing me, you guys, but I absolutely love it so far. Crystal Braver is going to come out for a three-hit chain. I believe Garvel had his barrier online. If so, it is now gone, as Flare is going to get rid of any barrier that would have been on Warrior Light. I take it back. He just dodged that. So this is an evasion team coming out from Tile, but what you can't dodge are guaranteed hits. You are not Yuffie, unfortunately. Literally, all the bold comes out. Pure hearts never die. Going to get that courage and AoE resist up. And in this 3v2, it's going to be hard to overcome. Sedia, how much damage do you have? She's going to pop a limit break here. I do believe this is actually the limit break this time. She is not trolling me. Flight of the Firebird comes out. Going to drop that fire attack resist. How much damage do we have? 6,000 and 4,000, and actually Garvel's fire attack resistance did not drop, so maybe running some elemental debuff resistance trust stones, something like that, as Knight's Blessing comes out from Murmur. This is something we've seen so many times. She does a fantastic job as a healer with this TMR setup, and if for only 40 cost, she's an absolute beast. Shifting Strike is going to seal the kill on Warrior of Light, and Sedia, unless she can reflex eight bajillion times just like game one, which I'm not going to count it out, you guys. <laughs> Armor incinerating bow shot comes out, dealing some damage. Okay. Hump. Okay. That's one. Sedia, seriously, do not. Sedia, I swear to God, do not do this to me. I will have a straight up heart attack during this series. Don't do this to me. This was already two in a row. Okay. She doesn't dodge. We're all good. Does this kill? It misses. She dodges it. She's evasive enough to dodge Murmur. Armshot comes out, disables the Murmur, and Sedia's reflex dream is still alive. You've got to be kidding me. This is absolutely insane. A shifting Strike comes out from Lee. I'm, I'm, got, I'm gone, guys. I'm walking out of the room. I'll be back. <laughs> All right, I'm back, guys. Uh, ready to cast the rest of this game. As Concentrated Chi Lancer comes out from Garvel, he is going to do his little Naruto run into a Spirit Bomb. And it misses! The Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, this was the reflex. This is why I freaked out. This is why I left the room. See, I forgot because I literally got off the, the chair, left the room, and came back. Sedia, I swear to God, if you pull this off, I don't know what I'm going to do. Delightful Destruction lands. It is a kill. And thank Jesus, because I don't know what I would have done if somehow Sedia pulled this off. I probably would have banned Reflex for the rest of the season. Guys, that series was absolute insanity. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did casting it. Uh, to be clear, that is a 2-1 series victory for King Delita and the Arc Knights over Tile of Fire Force. G friggin' G. All right, guys, game number one of what should hopefully be a pretty normal series, at least hopefully for my heart rate. That is what I'm hoping for. Here comes Starlight, Elena, Summer Kill Fate, and Shadow Links as the King Bradley team are comes out from Elena. So J Black running a pretty evasive heavy team here, also with a lot of slash chaining. Illusion coming out from the Shadow Links, gonna give herself some AoE resist and it also gets that evasion up for the two evasion units. Spirit Ward Mastery, attack, spirit and magic attack resist up. A very nice tech against some of these magic damage dealers coming out from Willy Goats as Treasures Hunter's Fortune comes out from Skahal. And now I normally would say this is just for the accuracy versus the evasion team but Willy Goats will literally run an evasion anything, so I would not put it past him. That magic barrier buff coming out from Aerith as Severo is going to channel his job level 25 skill, and uh, looks like I think that was the Courage buff coming out from uh, Startalena, Startalate Elena. Maybe that was her other evasion buff. I actually didn't quite catch that. As Aerith is going to channel a spell, I imagine this is probably a re-raise. It could be some Time Mage stuff, though. Not entirely sure. Illusion going to get refreshed by the Shadow Links, and she's going to put it on Summer Kill Fae this time. 
Summer Kill Fate. I imagine it's going to pop it again. Yes, she is. Spirit Ward Mastery, because now it hits all three units instead of just her and Elena like last time. So now start Elena, Elena. Of but evil doers beware. So she did the courage buff earlier. This is her evasion buff. That makes a lot more sense as wing staff comes out from Skahal, re-raise from Aerith. So he doesn't need the zombie TMR because Aerith is going to take care of that for him. As it looks like Tracker comes out. That is the Lara Croft TMR for Severo. So very, very interesting as Aerith is going to channel another spell here. Curious to see what she goes for. And this fight is taking such a long time to start. The King Bradley TMR actually just got refreshed by Elena. Treasure's Hunter's Fortune comes out from Shadowlings, though, an Agility and Luck buff right before they are entering the battle. That's looking very, very promising. Escahal is going to mimic them again and basically go for the exact same thing. Guard Haste going out onto the Skahal, though, so it looks like Time Mage sub for Aerith. Frost Wind Axe doing a good chunk of damage, but not bringing Severo to Courage could be pretty major here, as he is going to soak a hit from Elena regardless. The question is, though, does Severo have the accuracy to hit Elena, or is it only onto the Summer Kill Fae? We'll have to find out here. Healing Wind comes out from Aerith, so this is going to be a full heal onto Severo. Not sure how much it'll matter or not. It'll be hard to say, because will he live another hit from the other side? That's kind of the question here. Is Skahal in range to deal damage? It doesn't look like it. I think this Umbrella is unfortunately in his way. I get that, man. My Skahal missed due to a hole in the ground. Apparently, Umbrellas are his other weakness. He uncomes out for 3,600 damage not killing the Severo, so he does take another hit, so that Limit Break from Aerith actually looking kind of important here. Paralyzing Edge will finally finish him off, though, as uh, he only got damage off onto the Summer Kill Fae. And here comes Starlight Elena. Can she one-shot the Aerith? This is going to deal a very sizable chunk to Skahal. He will always live it no matter what, though, because he is in an absolutely absurdly broken thing. And the agility down on the entire party could be pretty major. The haste keeping Skahal very nice and speedy, though. I expect an energy buster onto these two units. No, it's a flare. Could he find the angle with energy buster? The flare even misses. That's actually brutal. Oh my gosh. Is this even... This is staff mage sub because he did use the movement buff, but I'm surprised he didn't go for energy buster there. Is the umbrella in the way? It very well might be. I'm actually not sure about that. But Skahal is going to drop his first life. He comes back with the re-raise. He gets CT up. So I'm thinking he is using that new wizard staff. But will he even get damage off? I don't think so, because I think Summer Killfay is going to kill him. Yes, she will. And that is a 3-0 victory in game number one for J Black and Chronic Fatigue. Heading into game number two, guys. And it looks like if you're scared of the storm, you just have to use an umbrella. So apparently that's all it takes. Looks like the evasion squad coming out from J Black again as a very similar team coming out from Willy Goats as well. So he thinks these units can get the job done, but will the positioning make any difference? We'll have to find out. This looks like the exact same turn rotation coming up from Chronic Fatigue as game number one, but Summer Kill Fate immediately going to walk forward with a Constricting Cleave. Aerith basically being a tank out in front, kind of baiting this out. Skahal might be able to find a kill here or at least a good chunk of damage. This is a Thunderga Disposer. 9,000 is enough to land the kill, and this is immediately a much better start for Willy Goats compared to the last fight. Several going to go for that level 120. Aerith is going to heal herself up along with Skahal and get some spirit up. I've Tempered My Resolve comes out from Elena, so she is a very strong unit, but she is very low on the range side of things, so she cannot reach damage. Shadow Links, can she though? Dark Haze comes out, lands the blind. I'm not sure if the blind will really matter though. I imagine Aerith is just going to go for another heal, and this positioning is actually working really well for Willy Goats. Aerith is basically just playing like a tank, even though she's a support, but Elena's going to lap. Did she find damage onto Aerith? I don't think so. I think this is just on Severo, which if this is the case, is okay for Willy Goats. Lance the damage, that Courage is huge for Severo here, because he lives this hit, and he should be able to go before any of this happens. Holy Prayer is going to full heal Aerith again, but Thunder comes out from Skahal. He still does not have the accuracy. He cannot find the damage. Man, oh man, he needs that guaranteed hit as Sleep whips from Severo. Unsure whether there's any Sleep Resistance on Shadow Links. Obviously, that's only a 25% chance, not the 50 so there's always a chance that it just doesn't apply. Shadow Tether goes on to the Skahal, though, and the stop lands. Shadow Link's an absolute beast of an MR unit, has increased stop chance, and this is going to be all she wrote, I think, guys. With a stopped Skahal, I can't imagine there's any way that Willy Goats can win this. They never got any sort of re-raise on the Skahal, so if he's dead, he's dead. Aerith does not have a full life. She is going to try her hardest to keep him alive, though. Healing Wind comes out. And will they target the Skahal over and over? And does she have enough heals to keep him alive until this stop fades? I believe it is three turns. 
I don't remember for sure though. Maybe it's maybe it's the whole fight. I think it eventually goes away. <laughs> I could not be sure. I'm not entirely sure, but it doesn't matter. Shadow Lynx is too damn fast. She's gonna chain with herself. That was like a six slash chain. And Aerith, unfortunate, just like an FF7 versus the Sephiroth. These swords are not good for her. Iridescent Blade's gonna come out. A nice little chain going to get through that barrier. She's going to try and hang on for dear life as long as she can. She goes reactionary heal and heals herself back up to full. But Shadow Lynx, Sh Shadow Lynx is going to finish this off with 9,000 damage and very well played by J Black and Chronic Fatigue. Game number one here of Sand Rooster, coach of Unicorn Gunfight versus All Smoked Up, coach of Trap Queens. And it looks like somebody has been doing a little bit of multi farming, uh, trying to get some of those raid medals. As it looks like Sharice, Edward, and Ravi's coming out from Unicorn Gunfight. Full Metal Rage immediately from Edward here. Not even going to buff. Just walk right into the fight for 9,000 damage onto the Celis here as Trap Queens are just that. They are spicy as hell. Leonis Bearer coming out from Elda. And I think he's going to have even more hate from Celis here. So Celis might actually even be able to live a turn, depending on how this positioning works out. The Keenblade coming out from Eileen. So Eileen, Elda, and Celis. Is there enough damage on this team is my question. Wind Snare comes out from Sharice, jamming Thrust for about 2,000 damage. And Ravis is way down on the beach trying to grab some aggro. She's going to do just that. Taunting Blade is going to use up basically all of her AP, but she has a lot of hate now. Eileen going to walk forward, though. Drill Impact. How much damage does this do? This is Elemental Disadvantage, but she's normally not short on damage. 2,800, though, is not as much as you'd like to see. Celis is going to go jamming Thrust onto the tank who just gathered all of that hate. And unfortunately, Celis, I think, is not long for this world here. As it looks like Fall with the Stars comes out from Cherise, the Limit Break. Absolute Meteor Shower comes out. Is this enough to kill? Yes, it is. 6,900 damage onto the Celis. And that is a very nice amount of damage. It looks like Edward should be able to do a ton here. I take that back. He wasted all of his AP on turn one due to the Limit Break. But he's going to get some AP Restore online. But can these two super old spear units of Elda and Eileen get any work done? I'm not entirely sure, guys. Earth and Glory is not going to do a ton of damage to either unit. About 2,000. Sharice is going to follow up with 10k onto the Eileen. RIP. I'm sorry, Orange J, but this is not her day. Edward's going to follow this up. She, he should have enough AP to get stuff done now. So it looks like he enters the turn with 19, is going to gain another 10, and Wall Breaker removes that barrier that was on Elda. He will get a turn, though. He has 37 AP. Elda, do you have any sort of miracle inside you here to get three for zero, I don't think so, man. Earth and Glory is a nice tech. A little bit of chip damage, but Maddening Arrow, I think, is going to take care of it. And that is a game one victory for Unicorn Gunfight. Game number two, and I realize that Sand Rooster is kind of a professional troll. He might have left that auto-click screen in the bottom left corner to make people think that it was theirs when they were watching battles on their phone. If that was the case, props to you, Sand Rooster. That is a very nice tech. If I ever watch this video back, I will probably be tricked by it myself. So here comes Sharice, Edward, and Phoebe. So the double win composition along with some time age support. And on the other side, it looks like Evasion is coming out from the Trap Queens. Their mascot unit herself is here with Venera Fennis along with Farm and Elda. So it should be very interesting. Elda, what is he going to go for? Leonis Barrier. This is the limit break. Going to get that hate up and the three hit shield. And he's going to walk forward. Will he, be able, will he be able to soak some hits? He actually did a decent job tanking last time, but it was just unfortunate the other t the team really didn't have enough damage. Wallbreaker, though, and I just said he was tanking so well. He made me eat my words. Wallbreaker absolutely destroys him in one hit. Oh my goodness. Here comes the evasion team, though. Farm is going to go next. Shuriken of Undoing, 1,200 damage. And Sharice is going to go next. Does the Limit Break land? I don't know if this is a guaranteed hit or not. I don't know how much accuracy Sharice has. It should be interesting. It gets dodged completely. So very nice job by farm dodging out on these hits. And will these evasion units be able to juke, move all of these uh, attacks coming in from Unicorn Gunfight and pull off some sort of victory? Here comes probably a guaranteed hit coming out from Edward. And the accuracy is there as well for 10k damage on the farm. Actually soaked very well by Venera, who has actually a good amount of unit attack resist. But unfortunately, she's going to have to resist a lot here. She dodges two out of the three from Triple Flight. But a quicken on to Edward makes me think that this fight is probably over. I imagine he should be able to land this kill. 6,500 damage is going to do it. And Unicorn Gunfight continues their hot streak with another 2-0 victory.
We've got Johnny B of the Disposable Heroes versus Zalk of Boko Buddies here. And it looks like Pissarro, Yuffie, and Uni on the other side. So that double evasion squad along with Uni support. I'm assuming Uni is up on the mountains here as the Brumal Forum Plus comes out from Yuffie going to avoid any of those guaranteed hits. So now the question is, is the accuracy there for this double dark comp from Zalk as Veil of Woe on turn one from Sephiroth getting some hate down as well from this Renell and Helena Leonis to back them up. Is it a white mage or a time mage? We'll have to find out here. So Uni up on the mountain. What is he going to go for? Is he going to be able to add any damage from that far away? Padfoot going to go haste and hate down. I don't think he really needs the hate down because he is about 5 million years light years basically away from this fight as the haste TMR comes out onto Helena as well. A very nice tech with that support backline unit. Revitalize coming out from Pissarro, so he's got tons of AP at this moment. Windstorm plus from Yuffie, 6k onto Rennell is very impressive. Tanked up much better by the Sephiroth though. Gloombound Trinity removes Courage, removes AP Restore, and that is a absolutely destructive turn coming up from Rennell onto Pissarro, and Pissarro is now gone in those two attacks and that is a brutal start for johnny b as it looks like the accuracy is still there from sephiroth even with the guaranteed hit nullification yuffie does not dodge and that is looking very tough for the disposable heroes they're looking somewhat disposable at this moment kiriga comes out from helena the accuracy is there and i expect nothing less from a zalk team just built extremely well and now uni is in a 1v3 it might take them a little while to climb this mountain and go get him uni if you can i would go hide buddy do this before they close the gap i know you want to do your best punishing slow arrow does 2600 damage he says i'm gonna try and get a kill before they close in on me a very valiant effort but i'm not sure it's going to be worth your time the reflex though we've seen it before we saw it from io 80 billion times can we see it again can uni pull this off i don't think so guys i don't think he's gonna pull it off but here comes the kirata Renell catches the heal gets that haste down again more removed courage on attack uni's gonna get another shot can he find the triple kill turns out he cannot 852 damage is not enough Helena, what is she going to go for? Another Bar Aurora, as it looks like Sephiroth and Rennell should be able to clean this up. As long as there's not another Reflex, Paralyzing Edge is going to do it. 10k damage, and that is a Game 1 victory for the Boko Buddies. Game number two here, and it looks like Johnny B is running more evasion here. Running the Yuffie, Pasaro, and this time running Mia instead of Uni here. So we'll have to see how this changes things up. And it looks like Yuffie... Is she going to go Brumal for him? Yes, she is on turn one. So getting that one hit shield along with the guaranteed hit nullification. Zulk running a team that we have not seen from him this season, I don't believe. This is Lightning, Little Leela, and Helena. So not running Sephiroth, opting in for the Lightning this time. Will she have the accuracy for this double evasion squad? We'll have to see here. So Mia's going to channel a spell. This should be something like Light Veil or Dark Veil. I imagine it probably is a Dark Veil. And did Zulk legitimately read this and bring lightning expecting them to bring more dark res if so zulk is a absolute genius as padfoot pissarro tmr comes out from helena and what is the pissarro gonna go for indomitable spirit going to get some courage and physical damage up yuffie with 80 ap though what can she get done she should have plenty of movement to close the gap she's gonna jump up into the air and this typically drops healing power if this is the attack i'm thinking of spark strike does a good chunk but it is not enough to kill mia and the Lightning does not have the follow-up attack on yet. So this is looking actually pretty good for Johnny B here. As Surprise Attack goes for 631 damage. Not a whole lot. The Curita does go on to Little Leela though. And the Taunting Spell misses the Yuffie. So here, poof, goes the ninja, getting that CT up. Does she lap Pissarro? Yes, she does. So with 64 AP, how much can she do on the party? Windstorm Plus is going to hit, hit multiple. 6,700 damage onto the lightning. Can Pissarro find a kill here? He cannot. He does not have the movement, or at least he needs to target the tank. Grease Lightning, though, is going to remove debuff. 6,800 damage is a very sizable chunk. These two units are very low. Barrier Buster for 5,100, though, breaks that one-hit shield onto Yuffie. And now Helena is going to go for another Kiriga, I think. Here it is. And uh, that heal is doing plenty. Spark Strike comes out from Lightning. And man, oh man, this looked really good for Johnny B now. But this is now a 1v3 for Pissarro. And this team is just looking so damn strong for Zalk. Sandrister, the only team who has pulled it off. But can Pissarro pull off a Miracle 1v3? It's not over yet. Crimson Cuts is a sizable chunk of damage. Silencing Spell going to drop the healing power on Pissarro. Not that it really matters. 
And Helena, does she have another Kuriga in the tank? I think she does, but she's going to go after Pissarro, guys. Spark Strike does not kill. Can he find a double kill at least here? AP Brave Lance, it's enough to kill the Lightning, but it's not enough to kill the Little Leela because this goes off before the heal from Helena, which is major. But if Little Leela can do one hit of damage, which she should have a guaranteed hit, that's it right there. That is the game victory. If Pissarro was able to find that kill on a little Leela, I think he might have legitimately won that fight 1v3. Insanely close down to the end. But GG's, congrats to Zulk and Boko buddies and well played by both teams. All right, guys, five weeks in the books, and this is how the Leonis division shakes out. We've got Jay Black in first place all alone, coach of Chronic Fatigue with 13 points. Only one mitigated loss. That was against Zulk. So Zulk not far behind, only one point there. He would have the tiebreaker if he were to catch him. But there are three teams tied in second, only one point behind. Just absolutely nuts. Sand Rooster, coach of Unicorn Gunfight. Zulk of Boko Buddies and King Delita of Ark Knights. Quick shout out, Zulk and King Delita have not played each other. Sand Rooster has the head-to-head -head tiebreaker over both of these two teams. So really juicy stuff here up at these top four. Not far behind though, Sh a Shoe Metal Alchemist, Machen X, 10 points in fifth place all alone with Highwind, Coach of Tears for Spears, and Willy Goats of the Corpse Brigade with seven. So not too far back there either. Again, top five make the playoffs. That's what you're shooting for. We are just past the halfway point. So there, there are still tons of fights left. Still plenty of opportunities to try and crack that top five but it should be interesting to see what happens going into the home stretch. Johnny B of Disposable Heroes with five, all smoked up of Trap Queens with four, and last but not least, Tile of Fire Force with three. So I hope you guys enjoyed these fights. There were some absolutely just nuts fights in this video. I literally can't get over how crazy some of these were. Some of these were, I swear to God, every fight King Delita is a part of is just absolutely nuts. So shout out to you, King Delita. Whether it's you or your opponent, something is always insane on every fight you're a part of, but I enjoy them nonetheless. So thank you guys so much for watching. You guys have a wonderful day.